And one of the main talking points today was that working families and small businesses will receive big tax cuts. MPD says this year, 25% of the traffic surge efforts have been right here in District 2. The snowfall is coming down at a rapid pace right now, but when most people hear about the snow, they like to stay inside. We just got to the scene not too long ago, and this wreck was so bad that this car right behind me landed on its roof. You can see tow truck drivers are trying to clear the scene. You know, plane crashes are a sad thing within the pilot community. However, safety still remains first. That's why they get to practice on these simulators. The people I spoke with today agree that police have a difficult job. All things considered, there is an issue with the black community trusting police officers. I wanted to ask him about why he lied. Hello, Timothy. Yeah. But today, he had no stories to tell. Yesterday. Timothy, you don't have anything to say? So there will be no more drugs and prostitution in this home? No way. No way. But you do admit that was happening. It has happened, yes. And I talked to the officers. Things are really bad out here in Burlington. The water is rising by the second. Protesters say that this is not a red or blue problem. They say that this is a red, white, and blue problem. 39-year-old Javon Holmes spent a week and a half in the hospital, but is now healing at home. The father of three is grateful to be alive because at the time of the shooting, all he could think of was dying. I just knew, I just knew I was taking my last breath. I knew I was finna die. Milwaukee police say Javon Holmes was shot by this man, 37-year-old Joe Vashon Ward. Ironically, his longtime friend. I just couldn't believe it happened. Holmes was shot six times outside of this barbershop where he works. Police tell us it's one of three shootings Ward was involved in on April 11th. He wounded two on 62nd and Silver Spring and killed another near 56th and Burlock. In my opinion, he went in his right state of mind. Ward is now charged with first degree intentional homicide and three counts of attempted homicide. I still got three bullets in me, all in my back and my legs. Since the shooting, Holmes' life has been flipped upside down. Over the last week, he's had to learn how to walk again, but most, he loves his new relationship with God. It had to be God, so it feels good, man. An experience that brought me closer to a higher power, something bigger than me. Joe Vashon Ward is expected to have his preliminary hearing later this week. As court continues and officials find a clear motive, we'll keep you updated on this case. Back to you, Tom. And despite Adam's family filing a missing persons report, it took eight days before he was determined to meet critical missing criteria by Milwaukee police. So now Adam's family and lawmakers are introducing green alerts. And that was probably the worst day of my life. It's a pain Carmen Adams could never forget. A lot of sleepless nights. It was horrible. Between March 20th and April 7th, Carmen tells me she and her family searched all over Milwaukee for her big brother, Corey. It was very frustrating and just very tough to deal with. But they couldn't find him. Corey was a veteran diagnosed with PTSD and bipolar disorder. Hours after his disappearance, his family filed a missing persons report. Yet it took eight days for him to meet the critical missing criteria by Milwaukee police. After 18 days, his body was recovered from a Milwaukee pond. It's greatly missed, greatly missed. So to honor his life, the family and lawmakers have drafted a bill requiring missing at-risk veterans to be critically missing persons immediately after police are notified. It's called Green Alerts. It will help families. Um, they won't have to go through and suffer like we did. This would provide urgent search efforts just like Amber and Silver Alerts. We really need to start making our veterans a priority. I mean, they fight for our freedom. Those people should be able to be found like in a matter of hours versus days like my brother was. Carmen just doesn't want this to happen in Wisconsin. She would like this law to be national. Get this, Corey was found within a mile from his parents' house. The bill will be referred to assembly and Senate committees next week. Even though Cheney was found guilty, this news is still bittersweet for the victim's family because Cheney is on the loose. As closing arguments go on during the murder trial of Dwayne Cheney, no one is able to find him. You see the chair next to his attorney, it's empty. 
Cheney is being tried for first degree intentional homicide from the 2015 shooting death of Michael Prescott Jr. Cheney has been gone for the last two days and the victim's family is filled with emotion. You know, he's making a mockery of our system. Court officials say they received an alert that Cheney's GPS monitoring bracelet was tampered with. While he was supposed to be in court, the bracelet was found near 44th and North around 950 yesterday morning. I hold the city and the state accountable for the actions of letting this criminal go. Prescott's mother is upset because Cheney was not in custody. He was released on a signature bond last month after he requested a speedy trial. Judge Carolina Stark says the state could not comply with the demand because new evidence was discovered. A statute required Cheney to be released. You've got a murderer running around the city or he's probably out of the state again by now. Prescott McClinton says again because after the murder of her son in November 2015, Cheney fled from police and wasn't arrested until May of this year. Family members also question why Cheney wasn't closely watched by the sheriff's office. Now, we went to the sheriff's office with that question, and they tell us that they do not monitor GPS suspects who aren't in custody. On GasBuddy.com, prices for a gallon of regular gas in the Oak Creek area are around $2.79. But the prices at this BP were once as high as $9.99. It was shocking, and that's why I thought that perhaps, you know, there was something malfunctioning. It wasn't, and Connie Ziggenhagen spent that much on this skyrocketed price. This picture she took, not photoshopped. She even has the receipt to prove it. As you can see, construction is underway. The place isn't even open, so the big question is, how did this happen? We spoke to the owner at BP. We weren't expecting anyone to be pumping gas at that point, and uh, you know, we apologize for the inconvenience. Josh Paul Dollywall says the day Connie stopped by, they were testing their gas lines. Originally, the price was set at $1 per gallon, and another driver got lucky and filled up at that price. We had raised the price up to prevent anyone else from pumping gas while we we're doing the testing. Unfortunately, that did not work. Taking care of the issue, Connie was refunded her money today. Our camera was rolling as she got her money back. So, Connie, how does it feel to have your money back? Oh, I'm glad. After this problem, the owner tells me that they will be putting up signs to let everyone know that they're closed. He also tells me that they will officially open 